Hi friends, my name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the Third on Instagram, Ravelry, and YouTube, and this is tutorial number one for Mend It March. The first mending tutorial that I'm going to do is about darning, and darning can happen on hand knits or machine knit commercial knits, and I would recommend that if you are doing a repair not on a hand knit sock, but instead on a machine knit fast fashion item of clothing, that you would actually use sewing thread as opposed to yarn. And the reason for that is that it'll be easier to find a match and it will stand out a lot less. So you can do the same technique and scale it up or down depending on the item of clothing that you're using. Now let's talk about what you need in order to darn. So the first thing that you're going to need is a darning egg. So this is one that looks a little bit like a maraca and it has the handle on it. And then this one doesn't have a handle on it. Either of those will work and if you don't have a darning egg um, you know, accessible. You could also use a piece of fruit. You could use the end of a water bottle. Um, there's a lot of other options, but you can also find these in thrift stores or antique stores for pretty affordable. Um, they do also make new ones, but um, these were hand-me-downs that I got from a colleague who was cleaning out their mother's house so you know you can really I think you can really find them kind of anywhere um, this one has a little bit of a varnish on it that is coming off you can see that there and then this one is just wood so since my hole that I'm gonna be mending today is pretty small I'm gonna be using this one with the little um, handle on it you're also going to need a darning needle it's just a thick sewing needle, like a tapestry needle. A pair of scissors, any scissors. I like mine to be pretty sharp. And either thread or yarn. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using a highly contrasting yarn um, just so you can see what's happening and you're gonna need the item of clothing that you'll be mending. This is a really well-loved sock that ended up with just a tiny hole in the toe here. And so this is a great um, way for me to show you how to do a little tiny darning. You can definitely do this over bigger, um, bigger holes, but it does get, it gets a little bit more difficult, which is fine. I'll show you, um, this is a pair of socks that I got a hole in the heel and you'll see that um, I use slightly contrasting but I think it looks really beautiful and then I on the other sock I got a hole in the toe area so that's what that ended up looking like and even if it doesn't look perfect when you first finish the darning you'll be wearing it and it'll kind of felt together and it will look um, it will kind of felt and look tighter and cleaner after you've worn them for a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is thread my tapestry needle. I like to grab an arm's length twice so that I can fold it over and not have so much yarn that it feels like it's going to be tangled. And I'm going to thread that through my tapestry needle. There's that. Then I'm gonna grab my darning egg and I'm gonna find that little tiny hole and I'm going to push it in so then I can kind of see it a little bit better. Right here, let's see, make sure that's focused. Oops. Um, and I can definitely see more of what's happening with that hole and just like the area of weakness. So, what is going to happen, and let me describe this before I get too far into it, is that I'm going to create 
a miniature weaving. So the first step is to create the um, warp, and I'm gonna go this way vertically over the little hole, and then I'm going to anchor the yarn on either side and create um, the weft of the weaving. So vertical lines and then the horizontal lines going over, under, over, under to secure this little spot of weakness. So to anchor the thread, I'm gonna come in from the hole and start here. And you want to leave a little bit of, um, you wanna kind of be on the outer edge of where the hole is. So you kind of want to anchor your yarn where the fabric is pretty stable. So I'll hide that in there. And I've got, and you just want to leave a big enough um, strand on the inside that you'll be able to come back and weave in later. Okay, so I'm going to start doing these vertical strands and you'll see um, what I'm trying to accomplish. So I also, when I'm getting ready to do my last, um, my last vertical line, I want to make sure that there's an odd number because to make it so that I can go over, under, over, under, and then pivot and continue with that, um, I need it to be odd. So right now this is seven. I could go two more to create nine, but then I'd be making it a little bit bigger than it needs to be. So at this point, I'm going to start doing the um, uh, warp. So let's get this into focus again. Wow, my camera's not happy. Okay, there we go. So I've got those vertical lines over the hole and now it's time to start to do the other part. So I'm going to anchor, um, I'm just gonna go over like one strand and kind of come under. And then I'm gonna start going over, under, over, under, over, under, and then over that last one. And then we continue with that until we are done. And I know this isn't what a lot of people want to hear, but if it doesn't look perfect, that's okay. You saw my other pair that kind of felted in place. Um, you know, the people who have the very perfect little darning photos online, <laughs> um, you know, they've been doing it for a long time. So even no matter how it looks, I assure you that your darned sock is going to last longer than your undarned sock with a hole and so you know it just don't concern yourself too much with making it beautiful on the first time i mean i think that any kind of irreg irregularities um you know and as botched as you may think your mending job is i assure you it's it looks good. So this isn't perfect by any means, but this will definitely get the job done and keep this sock from, um, you know, basically being thrown away, which I would definitely not want to do. And so at the very end of this, I'm just going to kind of um, 
push it in, I'll put this into the opposite side and just weave in my end like I would normally. Um, and then when I take it off of this stretched out, take out the maraca, <laughs> the darning egg, and feed this to the other side, weave in those ends. Yeah, that does look pretty, pretty good. That hole is definitely secure. Um, when I pulled the tension out um, or let it, released it from the tension of being on the darning egg, I think it looks really great. And this sock is gonna have quite a longer life than it looked like it would have with a hole in it. So yeah, that's how you um, do a little darning on a sock and I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. And if you're eager for more tutorials from me, please hit that subscribe button. Until next time.